Hey guys! Today I'll be giving you some advice about the SAT. So to start off with, some studying tips. My main advice would be to do a lot of practice questions. Ideally, you'd only use official SAT questions made by the College Board. This way you get used to how they ask the questions and what the correct opinion is. Doing these questions is like working out a muscle or developing a skill. It's something you can improve on as you do it more. However, another really important aspect of doing practice questions is to address your mistakes. Make sure you always read the answer explanations or ask someone else for help. That way you understand the reasons why your answer was incorrect and why the correct answer is what it is. Also, the mistakes you make will help you figure out which aspects you need to focus on more and practice more. If you always find yourself making mistakes in geometry, then do more geometry questions. Yes, you do want to continue practicing the areas you're strong in to maintain that strength, but it also is necessary to patch over and raise up the areas that aren't quite as strong. This is something else that is idealized, and I honestly didn't do this all that often, but when you do your practice questions, try to make the environment as much like the actual SAT test environment as possible. So this means a silent environment, using number two wood case pencils, doing it on paper, don't take out your phone. So resource recommendations for practice questions. My number one favorite, and it's what I use to study for the SAT, is Khan Academy. It connects to your previous SAT and PSAT scores, and also takes into consideration what you make mistakes on as you do their practice to do some sort of magical computer algorithm thing to serve you questions in areas that you most need to work on. Some things to focus on for particular subject areas. For reading and writing, this isn't a real study tip that you can implement in the week or the month or even two months before the test, rather a general lifestyle thing. It helps to be well read and you'll have a better intuitive understanding of grammar and how paragraphs and essays are structured. Yes, this is kind of hard to implement right before a test, but it's never too late to start reading more. Two areas that you definitely want to pay attention to, though, are number one, the concept of agreement. So making sure that your verb tenses match within a section, making sure that the subject matches the conjugation of the verb. Also, punctuation, specifically the colon, the semicolon, and the dash. Now moving on to the math section. The math knowledge that you need for the SAT is Algebra 2. So if you haven't taken that yet, you'll probably need to either self-study it or take an additional class. I don't really know how to help with this, but one tip I do have is to get really quick and really accurate at mental math. This will help you in the non-calculator section since you'll be able to do those operations more quickly and more correctly. And it's also useful for calculator sections because you'll be more efficient since you don't need to punch in those operations into your calculator. Instead, you can quickly do them in your head. The way you can study this skill is really simple. You can do this with the math homework and SAT math practice that you're already doing. Just don't use your calculator for anything unless it's absolutely 100% necessary. Oh, also, I don't really have essay advice because I didn't really prepare for the essay. I did two practice ones, never really got anyone else to read them and give me feedback, and I got a pretty bad score on the essay, so it's what I deserved, and I can't really help you. <laughs> now for tips on taking the test and answering the questions. So in general, keep in mind that every question is worth the same amount. So if you get stuck on one, don't waste your time on trying to figure it out. When you could, just keep going. First go through and pick up all the easy points of things that you already know. Then you can go back and start working on the more challenging ones. This is key if you have problems with running out of time. And of course, be sure to guess if you don't get to certain questions since the SAT doesn't penalize you for getting a question wrong. Now for reading, one of my favorite question types are the ones that ask you to support a previous answer using evidence. In these types of questions, it's really easy to take advantage of the multiple choice format. Usually only one pairing of an answer and a segment of evidence will make sense both together and in correctly answering the question. Next for the writing section. 
pick the answer that is most concise and still captures all the information and makes grammatical sense. For example, if your choices are tan, tan brown, and tannish, light brownish hue, then obviously tan is the correct answer since it captures all of the information while being the most concise. Another strategy for writing, although it can be a double-edged sword, is to substitute all of the answer choices into the blank and read the section aloud in your head and see which one makes the most sense. But this could be dangerous if you have a fundamental misunderstanding in the way grammar works in your head, so make sure to always pay attention to grammar rules first and foremost, and then to narrow it down, just use what sounds best in your head. And lastly, for math. One main thing that caused me to make mistakes is not paying attention to what exactly the question is asking for. If the question asks you to find why, X will probably be an answer choice. So don't get fooled by that. Make sure you underline or circle or mark up the question to pay attention to any words that might trip you up. That way you actually answer the correct question. Unless you're absolutely 100% sure that you'll have enough time to go and double check every single question, as you do the questions, mark the ones that you really want to go back and check. Since some types of questions are more time consuming, more tedious, and more prone to errors than others. These notes of what you need or don't really need to go back and check will make you more efficient throughout the section. And lastly, now let's say you've finished studying, finished taking the test, and you've gotten your score back. How do you decide what to do with that score? Is it good enough? Should you retake the test? Hopefully you have a college list or at least an idea of a couple of schools that you might want to attend. For all of those schools, Google SAT percentiles for that school. You'll probably find a table with 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile. So 50th percentile would be the average, and you definitely want to be above that 50th percentile. Ideally, you'd also be above the 75th, but if you're pretty close, I don't think it matters that much. And remember that your SAT score doesn't define who you are, and you can always improve it. Don't think that just because you got a certain number on that one test, it means that you're dumb and a bad person, because it doesn't. I hope you found this video helpful, and good luck on your SAT. If you're done studying, I upload new videos every Friday, and my Tumblr and Instagram are at studyquill. See you next time!